Welcome to another episode of Talking Ball with Pat Leonard. Special guest Willie Colon, Super Bowl champion, Pittsburgh Steeler, and former Jet, joins us on the program to talk a little Aaron Rodgers and New York Jets, Philadelphia Eagles and Jason Kelsey's absence, the NFC East coaching carousel, and what Mike McCarthy, Nick Sirianni, and Brian Dable have riding on the 2024 season. And we do a little Super Bowl predictions at the end. First, want to tell you about our sponsor, Boom Chaga. Talking Ball with Pat Leonard is brought to you by Boom Chaga Mushroom Super Drink. Right over here, over my shoulder, a natural extract loaded with anti-inflammatory, immune-boosting antioxidants and heart-healthy compounds. You can easily pour this natural liquid supplement into any of your favorite drinks. I put mine in my coffee every morning and immediately feel the difference. I personally have felt a post-workout-like energy boost with Boom. Chaga also has the ability to lower cholesterol, reduce inflammation, and improve immune and heart health with its beta glutens and antioxidants. Go to boomchaga.com today to place your first order. And if you use the discount code TALKINGBALL25 or you access it through the QR code on your screen, you will get 25% off your first subscribe and save order. Right now, that means a month's supply costs you only $30. Start feeling the difference today at boomchaga.com. We are also brought to you by Bet Online, which is your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season, from baseball, golf, soccer, right to all the top fights in UFC, MMA, and boxing. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Use the promo code BLEAVE for your 50% free bet credit on your first deposit up to $250. Bet online, the game starts here. And now our interview with Willie Colon, Super Bowl champion, former Pittsburgh Steeler, and New York Jet. All right, welcome to another episode of Talking Ball with Pat Leonard. Special guest today, the one and only Willie Colon, Super Bowl champion, analyst for the Carton Show on FS1, Jets analyst for SNY, co-host of the Why Willie Show with the J.J. Williams on YouTube. He and his wonderful wife, Aikisha, also have the Willie and Aikisha Cologne Foundation committed to empowering our community, fostering stronger foundations, and bridging the economic bat gap. I don't know how you have time to sleep or breathe, Willie, with all that uh, going <laughs> on, but uh, I'm grateful you have time for me. So thanks for being here, man. No, I always got time for you, Pat. You were always, uh, during my during my time on the, in the gridiron, man, you was always a class act. So I was... Uh, Always appreciate my time talking to you. Yeah, no, and I was um, disappointed I couldn't make it out this year, but always uh, excited to support it. This year was the 10th annual Willie Cologne golf outing, yeah. supporting the Lupus Research Alliance at New Jersey's beautiful Canoe, Canoe Brook Country Club. Benefits the Gene Davis Research Grant in loving memory of Willie's late mother. Willie just wanted to know, how was the event this year? I know every year it just seems to get bigger and bigger and and more support and you guys keep raising more money. Yeah, man, it was great. We were fortunate to actually push it back. You know, uh, this mark, as you mentioned, this marked our 10th anniversary. Um, you know, golf outings are interesting. Everybody comes with the intentions to support the golf outings. And then you realize everybody comes with their true intentions to win the damn thing. Uh, <laughs> and so it got competitive. It was fun, man. We had a daily as Thomas show up. Uh, we were fortunate to have Dave Harris back in the house, man. We had Matt Sims and uh, a host of others. And it, it, it's always a good time because as much as it is to raise awareness for lupus, which is obviously the number one cause, um, and, and to build awareness and to do everything to support um, the cure and to, to, to get, in, get rid of lupus, it becomes a family reunion at the end of the day because uh, so many people mm -hmm. come back year after year. They love it. They support it. Uh, we had you there last year. Uh, I don't know how well you played, so I, I, I mark, I take it as, you know, you, you enjoyed yourself. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, uh, shout out to Jonathan Mark, shout out to my wife, shout out to uh, our beloved staff, shout out to Canoe Brook. Uh, they always make it a class act event. So uh, I, I'm always appreciative of everybody that attends. No, that's great. Hopeful to make it out next year. And I will say this. I've, oh, I've Justin won. Tuck was there too. I can't forget how big Justin Tuck was in the house. Oh, yeah. Fellow Notre Damer as well here. Yeah. Um, the one thing I've noticed about your event, having been there a few years and then participated last year, and I've been to a handful of charity golf events and just events in general, is a lot of these types of events, they have a marquee of names that they say are going to attend, but people have lives, they have commitments, they mm -hmm. have families. 
Willie, usually it's hard for people to actually follow through on those commitments. And the, let's say it's a list of 20 names they say are going to be there. It probably is more like eight of them, and that's a good day. I think it speaks to what you and I, Key, should do and the fact that you said it is a family. I don't see any other event get as many people to commit and show up as you do. And I think that that speaks to the kind of person you are and the work you're doing and the fact that you are and, and the cause is, is genuine. So I commend you for that. No, thank you. I, and I appreciate that. I, I really just think it's to I think it, it's a tribute to the atmosphere and the culture we've, we've been able to uh, put together. Like you said, it's always about anytime we bring the golf out and together and I'm able to get on the phone and talk to guys and say, you know, I called Max Mitchell, uh, the backup tackle for the Jets um, mm-hmm. last minute. And I was like, hey, brother, I need you. And I know he was in a mix of OTAs and he's like, yeah, sure, I'm there. I was able to get Darnell Stapleton, my right guard with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now he's the assistant offensive line coach with the Washington Commanders. I mean, he was in the mix of being in OTAs and he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a way. So I, I, it's just all humbling to me, man. You know, like I said, I think it's we try to make it a class uh, act event. It's really a family reunion because people don't, don't get to see each other during the year. Um, we're able to raise money, have a good time. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye to next time. So it's always a blessing. No, that's great. And then, of course, we're talking to you today because you always bring it. You're always candid with your opinions yeah. and talking about the NFL. And I wanted to dive into some primary NFL topics here. We'll start in New York with the Jets, uh, your beloved Jets. Did you have a problem? I know we're kind of removed from it now, but I feel like it's still a major topic around this team because he is the face of their franchise. Did you have any problem with Aaron Rodgers skipping mandatory minicamp for that vacation to Egypt? Personally, I didn't. Um, according to reports, it seems like he kind of did his due diligence before he took off. He let the team know. He let the guys in the locker room know. Um, and it was his time to get away, and he did. Um, it's Aaron Rodgers. You know what I mean? Even in his his even his, his worst years is probably most people's best years. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, mm-hmm. not, I'm not in the business of being upset that the man chose to um, – take off to Egypt. I mean, Aaron Rodgers kind of does what Aaron Rodgers wants to do. And this is what the Jets, Jets signed up for, you know? I, I agree mean, with that. Yeah, I agree with that. And so you cannot be mad if the man wants to go to an ayahuasca retreat in Costa Rica and then take two, <laughs> and take off another two months, uh, take off two months later, excuse me, and head to Egypt. Um, people right now just want to see Aaron Rodgers be Aaron Rodgers. I, I think people have accepted who he is. I people, people, people have signed up to, all right, you know off the field, and whatever he says is going to be a little quirky or eccentric. Nevertheless, the Jets are, 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 are I can't even, dehydrated. They, they're, they're desperately dehydrated for a competent superstar quarterback, and that is Aaron Rodgers. So whatever happens off the field is off the field. Right now it's about Aaron Rodgers. Once he's suiting up and he's a starting quarterback for the New York Jets and he's walking onto that field, they want to see the cape come on and they want to see games be won by, by the hands of Aaron Rodgers. So – yeah, I think everything in the offseason is, is it is what it is uh, right now. And everything that I've seen, he seems like he's extremely committed. He wants to go back out there uh, and get it done at the age of 41. That's actually an appropriate image. Aaron Rodgers out there in Egypt vacationing the Jets franchise, stumbling in the desert, <laughs> desperate for a drink of water, a.k.a. competent quarterback play. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, at, on that topic, you know, Robert Sala, Joe Douglas, very interesting this where they stand as a regime we all know that they just have to get it done especially with the quarterback the ag is the town he has what do you think the minimum is that the jets can accomplish this season for joe douglas and robert sala both to keep their jobs i ask because obviously it needs to get a lot better in the offensive side of the ball needs to the score but do they need to challenge in the afc championship game is getting to the playoffs and winning a playoff game enough to show that they're on the right track? How do you feel that shakes out for that regime? Well, Pat, that, that's such a layered question because you can only go off what we saw what happened last year, right? The problem what happened last year is they got caught with their pants down. One, they never expected Aaron Rodgers to get hurt and be out and miss the remainder of the season off after playing four snaps, right? right. But what, what really kind of threw him for a loop was Zach Wilson wasn't up to par. He wasn't ready to lead that team or be the difference maker or kind of mask those last the the, the deficiencies they had on the offensive side of the ball. You have Reese Hall coming coming back from ACL, right? This offensive line had, you know, lost Elijah Vera Tucker, and they were kind of figuring themselves out as you go. You had Dwayne Brown. He was kind of an old goat. 
and they expected him to be better. They kind of rehabbed them onto the field, right? And so this patchwork offensive line, Zach Wilson wasn't the, what they, you know, they needed him to be better, and he wasn't better for whatever reason. Garrett Wilson seemed frustrated. You're in, you've seen him. He seemed extremely frustrated Sunday after oh, yeah. Sunday. The defense literally c- couldn't do anymore. They, they they were scoring. They were shutting. They were holding guys. At, they, they couldn't play any better than what they had. Um, and so with all that said, you know, for me, it's about how can they handle how can they handle the what ifs, right? Like what is what if Aaron Rodgers gets hurt again, right? And I and what happens if this defense isn't what they were last year? What happens if you know how can it, you know during the season fire dumpster fires are going to happen? That's just the NFL season. Things are going to come out of the the blue that you just didn't expect. But I think what hurt the Jets last year is they they held on to Zach Wilson too long. They didn't make a when it was a time to make a play. They didn't make a play. Yeah. Nothing came from it. And nevertheless, man, I thought the defense played out of their skulls. And what was the most frustrating? Uh, what, what was the most frustrating thing about it at all? Out of it all, excuse me, was you know on Sundays, me and Jet and uh, me, excuse me and Bart, Connor Rogers, we're on SNY, we're covering the Jets, man, and we do the pre and post show. Mm-hmm. And I was telling the guys, considering my time at the Jets. And I saw it with myself and I saw it with other guys who have played a long time. You started seeing the spirit and the fire kind of seek out of these guys eyes because they realize hmm. so many things that are happening are just bigger than them. You know, they're going out there, they're playing balls to the wall. They're being committed to the cause. They're trying to do right. And they're losing games they should win. And they're losing games they know they would have won if Aaron Rodgers was that quarterback. Right, even and if they just got a bare minimum of correct. confidence, right? And so, and then you're rolling out there, you're rolling Tim Boyle out there and you're trying to, you're trying to, you know, have win one for the Gipper. The guys are like, come on, dog. Like, it's, it, this ain't it. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, it was fun. I, I had a lot of empathy and I had my heart broke for those guys, man, because the offensive line for the Jets weren't playing well last year. It was a makeshift group. Um, and I'm a big fan of Joe Tittman and, and the rest of those guys, but they just weren't, they weren't gluing it. I think a lot of it had to do with experience and maturity. I think the defense have held on and tried to fight us to the death, if, if you will, but they just couldn't, they couldn't do enough to kind of win games uh, simply on their own. And offensively, they just struggled. So I think for Robert Sala and Joe Douglas is when, if and when things happen, how how can they control it? How how can they make it better? How can they do, what can they do to make sure if, they're, if this Jets are on a winning, winning streak or if they're going in the right direction, if something comes awry, how can they handle that, right? Mm-hmm. And and to the point where it does, it's not a, extreme detriment to the team and where they're trying to go during the season. So you, so you don't think you're not looking at a, they have to reach point X in the postseason as much as you're saying just from a baseline of operating the organization, like they need yeah. to be able to solve their problems and show Woody Johnson that, right. They're, they're not going to make those types of whether it's roster decisions or team management decisions that cripple themselves for an entire year, essentially. Good, good teams figure it out during the season, right? You know, good yeah. teams know how to adjust good coaches, know how to get their guys to do the right thing on Sunday so they can come out the, the building with a W. I mm. love Rob Asala. I, I'm a big fan of Joe Douglas. Um, I, I, to be honest, I I know people may laugh at me for saying this. I thought they, that I think they have done a great job together on trying to keep face through all the madness that's encircled this team the last couple of years. Um, you know, Rob Asala, was, Rob Asala was brought here to make this a championship caliber defense. Well, he has it. I mean, you talk about Quentin Williams, you talk about CJ, excuse me, CJ Mosley, you talk about Sauce, you're talking about, I mean, they have a championship caliber defense. They just got to go win a championship. Really enjoying our conversation with Willie Colon. Wanted to remind you we are sponsored here on Talking Ball by Boom Chaga Mushroom Super Drink, a natural extract loaded with anti inflammatory, immune boosting, antioxidants, and heart healthy compounds. You can easily pour this natural liquid supplement into any of your favorite drinks. I put mine in my coffee every morning and immediately feel the difference. I personally have felt a post-workout-like energy boost with Boom. Chaga also has the ability to lower cholesterol, reduce inflammation, and improve immune and heart health with its beta glutens and antioxidants. Go to boomchaga.com today to place your first order. And if you use the discount code TALKINGBALL25 or access it through the QR code on your screen, you will get 25% off your first subscribe and save order. Right now, that means a month's supply costs you only $30. Start feeling the difference today at boomchaga.com. They're one of the, yeah, they're one of the more talented teams in the league, really. Yeah, so I, I don't I don't I don't hate those. I just I just I get frustrated because it, I think people don't realize how hard it is to win one game in the NFL. Um, mm-hmm. and then let alone 
win a couple and then let alone get to the playoffs like so you asked me that question you're like well what's the bare minimum my mind is yeah you gotta get to the playoffs that's the minimum right but each game means something right each game has to catapult you to the next game where you come with momentum and you feel like all things have to click and a lot of things have to work i think elijah vera tucker is probably the biggest wild card on the team because from a depth standpoint um what he when he was healthy man you can play him in any up, up and down the line and he can hold his own you're talking about office lines led by tyron smith one who I, I think is an absolute future hall of famer you know he he's been struggling as of the last couple of years if he's not ready to go and elijah's still trying to rehab himself back and for whatever reason you know quentin moses he, he's he was back and forth with injuries i mean now right. we're like man this this shakes up this shakes up what we're trying to do so that's what i mean from that standpoint if all those things come awry, how can Salah and the company, led by Joe Douglas, make sure that doesn't lead to the detriment of the big picture? Catch themselves so where they fall, right? That, that makes sense, yeah. That answers my question about the offensive line, too. How to, Not only can the starters gel together, but also how can they just make it work if one of those key pieces falls out? Um, staying on the offensive line, the Eagles lost Jason Kelsey in the NFC East. I think generally people seem to still think they're going to be formidable on offense. They add Saquon Barkley. Wondering, you know, as a Super Bowl winning offensive lineman yourself, do you think people are underestimating what Kelsey's loss will mean for Jalen Hurts and the Eagles? Or is that something they can compensate for because they have enough talent around the quarterback? You know, talent's one thing, but we got to, I think, you know, we got to pay attention to the fact that, you know, 17 players that were on the team are either gone or not signed with anybody right now. Uh, and that's, and that's big, you know, from a cultural standpoint, you know, I, 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 I still have this burning memory when Nick Sirianni uh, was at the end of his press conference, uh, his, you know, the, you know, at the end of the season press conference. And uh, there was a journalist, I forgot the guy's name, you know, asked him after I think Fangio's the defensive coordinator right now for them. Right. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Right. Um, they have a new OC. And I think the journalist asked him, all right, so what do you do? And, and Nick Sirianni goes, well, I, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm control the culture. And I was just like, ooh, you know, like like that's – Wrong answer. <laughs> yeah. Like he goes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure the culture's right and all at X, Y, Z. And I'm saying to myself, it's going to be a lot because you lost a lot. Kelsey is by far was the face of the franchise. He was the guy. He was the ambassador, if you will, the walking ambassador of the Philadelphia Eagles. Um you know, Jalen Hurts after having a troubled year last year from the standpoint that, you know, his team was 10 and one at one point and took a nosedive. Yeah. And I'm sitting back saying to myself, well, how did you get there? And it's not just because of bad ball play. There was there was things behind the curtain that was going on. So you're now you're telling me a team that, you know, you lost a lot of key guys. You know, Hassan Reddick is now a Jet, right? You know, Jason Kelsey is retired. Some of these guys that were impact players for this ball club or either gone or, or out somewhere. So now you're de dependent on young talent to show up and be the face of thing. Now you're, de now you're asking Jalen Hurts to maybe possibly do more or to kind of reinvent himself. Because I go back to when Nick Bosa said after his game, after, after the Niners came uh, and played Philly, and he goes, we know the blueprint. You know, take away Jalen Hurts' first read. He, he, he turns into a deer in the headlights. He doesn't know what to do with the football. That's when we come alive. That's when we send the boys after him. And San Francisco showed I, I remember San Francisco showed up in Philadelphia with the all black on. Mm -hmm. And they walked into town and they beat the hell out of the Philadelphia Eagles. They punched them in the mouth, man. He punched Debo them in the was, mouth. Debo's yelling at the fans, right? Punched them in the mouth, drank the milk out the car and slammed the fridge and set the whole house on fire and got back on their plane and went to sunny California. And we <laughs> was all like, what? Like that yeah. happened and it, it, it happened. So I'm just digesting what happened last year and last year's last year. But last year, that, that roster was supposed to be going back to the Super Bowl. Yeah. And by the way, you, we, we forget one thing. Baker Mayfield beat him. <laughs> you say what you want about Baker Mayfield, but they, they that Philadelphia team walked into Tampa and Baker Mayfield and company, and company handed them their ass, right? Yeah, they rubbed their face in the dirt. Right. Man, that so, was, yeah. I you they don't have to they don't have to just I don't know they don't have to court me again you know what I mean they don't have, they don't have to they don't have to date me again you have to open a car door you have to buy me dinner because I don't believe I don't believe you, you know? no I'm so, I'm with you I think even though they can be the team they were two years ago they could easily be the team they were at the end of last year again especially correct. from like you said That's a exactly culture I'm, I'm totally with I'm you exactly all right I, 
I know your time's short, so a couple quick rapid yeah, yeah, fires if you have time. I'm looking All at right. my phone. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, first, to stay in the NFC East, Mike McCarthy, Nick Sirianni, and D- Brian Dable of the Cowboys, Eagles, and Giants all on the hot seat. If you had to pick one who will keep his job out of those three, who would you bet on? Uh, probably Brian Dayball. Um, hmm. and, wow. and, and this is how I this is how I see it. You know, as far as Mike McCarthy, they only spent what twelve or thirteen million in off season. Yeah, uh, and this is a team that got dog walked uh, <laughs> and pretty much dog walked in the playoff game uh, <laughs> at home. You know. And so they didn't do anything to get better. So I'm looking at it from that standpoint. The standard for Jerry and, and company will always be Super Bowl bust. And I'm a big fan of Dak. I love Dak. I like what he represents. I'm a fan of him. I know people are like, oh, you know, he's well, he's great during the regular season, but he's he's okay during the playoffs. I'm like, yeah, but it takes a lot to get to the playoffs, right? And then the last, you know, and so I'm always a fan of his regular season success. And obviously he has to be judged for his postseason success. He hasn't had a lot of it. But I do think right now, I think it's going to be a, it's the the Cowboys scare me from a, from they haven't gotten better. They haven't got better on defense. They lost Dan Quinn. They didn't do a lot on defensive line standpoint, which was a big need for them. Uh, Michael Parsons, I think, got exposed uh, a lot last year in different aspects. Um, mm. So we'll, well see. What, the Cowboys fans will tell you he got double teamed and and held. Yeah, talk to T.J. Watt. Talk to Miles Garrett. Mm. See, go look at what world they live in. Talk to Nick Bosa. You know, talk. They live in that world where they get double, triple team. I played with James Harrison. I seen the man. I seen four people with James Harrison one time, and they still, <laughs> they still, they still got home. So, um, and they, they it, and even by the way, they even try to put Mike Parsons in the true linebacker position, and he he was getting caught up in the wash, right? And so they try to move him around. They try to do things to combat some of the things the offense, uh, you know, the, the what the offense was trying to do to him. He just, you know, he just wasn't getting home for whatever reason, but. I say this to say that I think I think Mike McCarthy knows he has to go. He has to get to the playoffs one, and he has to get to the NFC Championship. I think that's the only thing that saves his jobs. Saves his job if he does. If that doesn't happen, I can see them. I'm saying goodbye. I can see the whole thing kind of just blowing up and them they starting over. As far as Nick Sirianni, it goes back to what we were just talking about. I think the Eagles really have to not look like a dumpster fire. Um, all the circus, all the nonsense that's kind of swirled that team. That can't happen since he's going to be a cultural uh, coach, if you will. Yeah. Um, you know, this is the, from, from, from a production standpoint, standpoint, excuse me. Um, they got to put up points and they got to, they got to, they got to go up the field on third down. They were abysmal. Uh, so that's going to be a big key. But if, I think if you still, you, if you continue to hear some of the things that came out of the locker room, if you could, if you continue to see the, some of the, the lack of production, um, that we witnessed towards the back end of that season, it's easy to say he's probably going to be gone. Uh, but Brian Dable, I think right now, for me, I feel like he's probably he's he's good because I think he, guys lock him in, like him in a locker room. I think he fits the the mold of what the Giants want to represent: hard nosed, fair. Um, and I think right now, even with the addition of the young guys they just acquired in the draft, I think defensively and offensively, offensively they answered the bell on in the trenches as far as revamping the offensive line, getting the D line together. Uh, now it's just a matter of, you know, what happens, you know, can it, can a young gun go out there and get it done to JJ McCarthy? Interesting. All right. Uh, last one, last one. We have, um, just prediction time. So who will win the Super Bowl this season? And then conversely, who will have the number one pick in next year's NFL draft? So give me the top team and the worst team in the NFL this coming year. Uh, who will be, okay. Start that over. Who's going to win the Super Bowl? Yeah. Super Bowl for me, man, I, it's hard, you know, it's hard to count out the Chiefs, man. It, it, I mean, they, Patty <laughs> Mahomes is, is, is all dog, man, and him and Kelsey seem to have this one thing, two, one, two thing, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to be a homer in that regard. Not, I'm not a homer, but I'm not going to be born in that regard. Um, listen, I'm going to jump out there. I, I would like, I think the Steelers have got a legit shot. Ooh. I do, and I know I'm a homer. I said I won't be boring, but I didn't say I was going to be a homer. I end up being a homer. <laughs> uh, I am being a homer. I think the Steelers got a legit shot. They, they, uh, if Russell Wilson, which we all want to see, I want to see, um, can go back to 2010 Russell Wilson uh, when he was tearing it up. We'll see. But I, listen, I, I think the Steelers, 
AFC is a good shot. The Jets, if they stay healthy and everything goes right, it's hard to count the Jets from what from what they look like on paper. Mm-hmm. Um, but from the NFC side, man, I got I got Detroit. I like I like Detroit a lot. I just do. I, got, I like Detroit. I think they just built for it. I like their I like their kind of moxie about them. Uh, they got to go out and do it again. Uh, and if it's not Detroit, I can definitely see – I can stay in that division and see Green Bay making a big run too. Yeah, that Detroit offensive line and team, they got that I gave you. I gave you a total of four teams. I know only two teams play in the Super Bowl, so I apologize. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to clean that up just for a while because I already hit a critic. Like, you give us fuck four. I'm going to go – I'm going to hey, go – Hey, for our purposes, Bay. you – for our purposes, you just pick the Steelers, right? Yeah, That's for, for, I'm gonna yeah. go. I'm gonna go Detroit Steelers Super Bowl. There we go. Woo! Detroit Steelers yeah. Super Bowl. The Willie Cologne special. Yeah, some snarl to that Detroit team that you played with as well. Yeah, I love Detroit. Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, Man Campbell. I'm, I'm a big fan of Dan Campbell. <laughs> we call him Man Campbell. Man Campbell in the streets. I love it. I'm gonna start calling him that now too. Yeah, Willie, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to talk to us here on Talking Ball with Pat Leonard. We look forward to seeing you again soon um, out on the NFL beat during training camp. And uh, you always bring it. So thank you so much for being here. No, thanks for having me. uh, Yeah, I appreciate it. All right, take care. That was a fun conversation with Willie. Go check out the Willie and Aikisha Cologne Foundation online. And remember, we are sponsored here by Bet Online by Estate 98 Coffee and Esencia Day Cafe from El Salvador. Dates back to 1798. I drink it all the time when I'm doing the Talking Ball podcast. Go to their TikTok shop, a great convenient way to buy it, get it delivered right to your door. And of course, we are sponsored here by Boom Chaga Mushroom Super Drink, a natural extract loaded with anti-inflammatory, immune-boosting antioxidants and heart-healthy compounds. You can easily pour this natural liquid supplement into any of your favorite drinks. I put mine in my coffee every morning and immediately feel the difference. I personally have felt a post-workout-like energy boost with Boom Chaga also has the ability to lower cholesterol, reduce inflammation, and improve immune and heart health with its beta glutens and antioxidants. Go to boomchaga.com today to place your first order. And if you use the discount code TALKINGBALL25 or access it through the QR code on your screen, you'll get 25% off your first subscribe and save order. Right now, that means a month's supply costs you only $30. Start feeling the difference today at boomchaga.com.